Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm here to do more missing women, children, and men cases. We are here to break the codes if we see any. We are here to see where their bodies are located, if they know. And we also here to see if they are alive, deceased, body suited, change their identity, or misidentity. Y'all already should know who's involved, the white supremacists, the African Americans, and the KKK. So let's begin. This is about a baby named Adrian Renee Day. This is how she looks. I'm hearing she's the one that, I'm going to talk about the daycare down the street from me. They got, they got raided by the tropicals. I don't think this baby made it out, out alive because her parent, her mama here right now. And she's saying she dropped the, the, dropped the baby off at the school, the daycare that day. Okay. This is how she looks, the baby. And all the, all the other kids that survived, they walked to my house because I was supposed to walk that day. But I didn't know I walked at a place like that, you know. So my kids would be killed then, you know. I, I just don't remember. Oh, this the man, though. Andrew Terry. They said something to do with it, though. He looked like Alvin Stucky. But, yeah, I didn't know. So they just walked to my house because they knew that I was a teacher, but I didn't know. Okay, that this child, the baby, been missing since September the eleventh, two thousand eighteen. Missing from Roanoke, Virginia. Endangered missing, female, black, born May the twenty eighth, two thousand eighteen. Her age is three months old. Her height and weight is two zero fourteen pounds. The clothing, jewelry description is a pink onesie and pink socks. The stentric characteristics is African American female, black hair, and brown eyes. Details of disappearance. Adrienne was last seen at her home in the 1100 block of Hanover Avenue in Roanoke, Virginia on September 11, 2018. Her mother, Jessica Day, stated she put her down to sleep and when she came back an hour later, to check on her, the baby was gone. Okay, yes, her mother is Jessica, and I was just thinking about her the other day too. She worked their loads. Okay, yes, your baby daddy did it. Um, when she came back an hour later to check on her, the baby was gone. She called the police at eleven o'clock p.m. When they arrived, they found no signs of forced entry, but the residence has been unlocked. The following day, police arrested Andrew Christopher Terry and charged him with illegal disposal of a body in Adrian's disappearance. Yes, I'm hearing a pipe. A photo of Terry is posted with this case summary. Initially reported to be a cousin of Adrian's father, he is himself presumed to be her father. He was an Adrian. He was at Adrian's home on a separate occasion the day she went missing and had communication with her mother up until the police were called. Terry lived in <clears throat> Blastburg, Virginia with his girlfriend of 16 years old and their two, two children. But for years, he had also been seeing Jessica off and on. She's saying yes. He known her since childhood. Yes. Jessica has four other children and had told him she did not want to be a mother again. He had repeatedly offered to take custody of Adrian, but I had also suggested she place the baby for adoption. Although Adrian's paternity has not been established, Jessica had filed for custody and her daughter and child support from Terry. Jessica reported that around midday on the day of Adrian's disappearance, Terry came by her apartment put the baby down for a nap, and left for work. At 9.30 p.m., Jessica breastfed Adrian, then left the baby sleeping, sleeping on her mother's bed for the next half hour. Who wrote this? She was in the kitchen on the phone with Terry at least once and walking around the apartment. She returned to her bedroom at 10 o'clock p.m. and found her six-year-old asleep on the bed, but Adrian was gone. Jessica smelled the cigarette smoke in the bedroom and suspecting Terry had been there. Immediately called him and asked where he taking Adrian. 
He said he didn't have her. Until 11 o'clock p.m., Jessica spoke to Terry several times over the phone and on Facebook Messenger. At one point, asking him, are you harming her or setting me up for murder? At 11 o'clock, Jessica called the police. When police met Terry at Jessica's home after Adrian's disappearance, they noticed his pins were red and appeared to be muddy. He offered a severe explanation for this, but then, but after he was questioned for several hours and took a break for a nap, he stated he falling down a slope after digging his daughter's grave. The brown stains on his pins were never tested, and it's not clear whether they was mud. Okay, this is not think blood, okay? Blood can turn brown. Terry gave a very different account of the crucial hours around Adrian's disappearance. Okay, or something else. He said he went back to Jessica's apartment after he finished work, and Jessica met him out front with Adrian and told him to take her. He said Adrian, who, he said Adrian had a slight cut and general was swelling on her face. He put the baby in his lap and drove towards Blackbird and Frenny or 30 minutes into the drive. Adrian simply stopped breathing. He said he tried to revive her and failed, and he didn't seek medical attention for the baby because he was scared. Instead, Terry stated he took exit 128 off Interstate 81 in Inchtow, Virginia, and continued driving towards Blacksburg. Somewhere along the way, he stopped and dug a shallow grave for Adrian with his hands. He said he, he can tell us where the location is, yeah, tell us. On a bank near the railroad tracks in the intersection of Cedar Run Road and Janelli Road. He covered her body with leaves. I'm here in the park. On the late afternoon of September the 12th, Terry took police to the location, but dolls turned up no sign of the baby or a grave site. As Terry had stated, the grave was so shadow that the wind might have uncovered Adrian's body. Police asked if he fabricated his story. He said he was telling the truth, and I swear to you, she's over there somewhere. Later that day, he said recanted, saying he had only brought police to the spot to show she wasn't there. Yeah, that's when I went to try to go find my daughter, Kia, baby, body. And doing that Shanice video, so he trying to help Shanice, you know, so I wouldn't know about where Kia really is. And I went to the park. I, I didn't find no other babies. Though. We didn't find no other babies. We just found the black dye again. Like, she popped up and disappeared. I'm like, what the fuck? So we finna look again. When the police questioned him again on September the th 13th, Terry returned to his story about Adrian dying in his car and him burying her. That don't make sense. That's murder right there. So you didn't, you didn't tell nobody. Further searches turned up no evidence to support the story. However, Terry was fired for felony illegal disposal of a body in September 2019, a year after Adrian's disappearance. Jessica testified for the defense. She admitted she given some false statements to police about her daughter's disappearance and that she suffered from memory lapses. At various times, she said Adrian had smothered after falling asleep during breastfeeding or that she was kidnapped by an adoption agency or that she had sold her. She admitted none of those statements were true. Jessica was admitted, admitted she had called Terry's defense attorney in 2019 to say Adrian was alive and well and that she had called Terry and asked, should I wait until court to say I gave her to your cousin? Question mark. She suggested Adrian may have been injured by falling from her carrier and that the full story was that Terry had taken her away. Location data from Terry's cell phone tracked his route from Wonoki to Blacksburg that night. He bought cigarettes and a lighter at a convenience store, which is over there. I, I know where it's located. Yeah, that one by Illy. He bought cigarettes and a lighter at a convenience store before going to Jessica's home. The data showed a pause around the intersection of Janella Road and Cedar Run Road for six minutes. And the prosecution said that during this time, Terry buried Adrian. Terry defense attorney questioned whether the baby had actually died. 
After hours of deliberation, the jury was unable to reach a verdict. Terry would have to be fried again. Although police... Bro, they just getting in your body suit. Anyway, although police believe Adrian is deceased, they are not sure of the circumstances of her death, and both parents remain, pu remain persons of interest. Her case remains unsolved, but foul play is suspected due to the circumstances involved. Yes, I agree. Renault Police Department at 540-853-5959. The source's information is the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, WDBJ7. Locate the missing Facebook page for Adrian Day, Renault Police Department, the Renault Times, and WSLS10. Okay. Uh, this has been updated two times since October the 12th, 2004. Last updated September the 27th, 2020. Picture added, okay? So if you like to help with this case, y'all can. I don't do it for the fame or the money. I do it for this what I love to do. And to the real families of the victims, we will get you set up.